This is how I turned a Browning pump action shotgun into a Rock Island Armory 1911 380 Baby Rock. It starts in about probably 1995, 96, around that era. So in 96 ish, I was running a crew and I had uh, one right hand man, a guy that I'd known for most of my life since I was about 11 years old. He was working for me. And we had this brand new greenhorn working for us that, uh, yeah, he didn't know which end of the hammer was the business then. But anyway, we were working out of town. We were working in Battle Creek, Michigan. And um, at the time, I was hunting a lot. And this out of town work was eating into my hunting time. So, okay. Okay, so we uh, looked at the map on Mich the Michigan map that I had and found a state game area that was like five miles from our hotel room. So, hey, let's bring our guns to work next week and we'll do a little small game hunting. So, we brought our guns to work the following week. So on Monday we show up and Brian, my right hand man, has a pellet gun. I go across the street from the hotel to the Kmart and I buy a 410 single shot shotgun and the new guy, let's just call him Junior, he shows up with a uh, Browning pump shotgun and it was the one with the glossy stock and the engraved receiver and we were like, what were you thinking? Look he's talking! He's talking to you. And after work, we went hunting. We didn't see anything. We got down through the guns in the back of the truck, locked them underneath the bunch of covering, had a fiberglass top on my pickup, locked it all up. Back to the hotel. The next morning, it was all gone. And I told Junior, he was beside himself. I told him, don't worry about it, my insurance will cover it. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi. So the young man, after a couple of days, you know, dragging his feet and feeling sorry for himself, uh, happened to overhear him talking to his girlfriend on the phone back at the hotel. And he was crying. He was so sad. I felt bad for him for about two seconds and I realized he's a 20 year old man and he probably shouldn't be crying over a girl but lesser things have happened and we woke up in the morning and he was gone and he packed up all his stuff in the middle of the night and split so when the check did come I contacted him and left a, a message in his voicemail saying, dude, I got your I got your money for your shotgun. Get a hold of me so I can get this to you. And after two weeks, I took a check and bought the shotgun. Just in the off chance that he would call and ask for a shotgun back. Our truck. <laughs> But the phone call never came, so I kept it. So I did what any red-blooded American would do with a shiny new shotgun. I went hunting with it. Once. And then when I got home, I found a big scratch in the stock. So I didn't use it hunting anymore. I put it back in the safe and that's where it sat for 20 years. So 95-ish. That gun cost $497. An MSRP on that gun today is $850, roundabout. Well, I didn't get $850 for it. But I got a pistol for it. And I've already used the pistol more than I've ever used a shotgun, I think. Maybe 100 rounds through that shotgun in 20 years. I'm in the wrong house. 
So fast forward 20 years, I go to the gun store, I see this pistol in the uh, cabinet. I mean, I could have probably just paid for it right there, but I didn't want to tie up the funds. I asked her if she had a, a layaway program, and she said, yeah, we got a layaway program, 20% down, balance in 30 days. Uh, you know, I might do that. So I went home, and I'm thinking about it. You know, what, what's in my gun cabinet that uh, that I can get rid of and, and not lose any sleepover? Immediately, a Browning shotgun comes to mind. Here's a gun that's been sitting in my gun safe for 20 years. I took it hunting once, 20 years ago. And I, in fact, I still have some of the original shotgun shells that I bought for that hunt in my possession. So I've got less than 100 rounds ran through that gun. Yeah, why not? I'm not going to do anything with that shotgun. Why don't I just trade it for that pistol? I know I'm going to shoot the pistol. So I took the Browning and I went back to the gun store and I talked to the owner and I said, you want to trade? He said, sure. So we traded. You know, this whole deal went down really quick, like within a couple hours of me deciding and me acquiring the new pistol. That's how quick the deal went down. In fact, it happened so fast that I didn't get any video of the shotgun before I traded it in. So as I'm filling out the paperwork, I'm asking myself, what kind of a person just walks away from a $500 shotgun? After, I mean, it's not like I didn't try to get in, get with this guy to get him a shotgun back. I wanted him to have a shotgun back. I didn't care that he left the job. In fact, he did me a favor. He freed me up to be able to do what I do. Instead of babysitting a 21-year-old man, I was able to do my job. And, in, and him leaving the job unencumbered us from what we do professionally. So he actually did me a favor by walking away. I didn't care. I just wanted him to have his shotgun back. Right? So, let it be known that I would rather owe you than screw you out of it. Damn. You have tape on this? Crying out loud. The, the kind of person that walks away from his $500 shotgun is the kind of person that didn't buy the damn thing to begin with. When you do what I've done for as long as I've done it, you can spot the country boys from the Spoke City Kids in a heartbeat from a country mile. And this kid wasn't any exception. You could tell just by the way this guy dressed for work, what he showed up in, and just by his attitude. That this was a spoke rich kid. Yes, Junior was a spoke rich kid. This guy had everything he ever wanted in life given to him, no questions asked. If I'd have paid $500 for a shotgun when I was 20 years old, I would have kept my job until I got my shotgun back. Yeah, I would have made sure that I got my shotgun back. So Junior was more afraid of facing my wrath than to face his own father, who probably bought him that shotgun. It might have been his dad's shotgun for all I know. But there you go. Anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Hope you liked it. If you didn't, I'm so sorry I wasted your time. I really am. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Until next time, have fun, stay safe, shoot straight, keep your powder dry, and have a splendid day. You should see what's going on off camera. Huh? Don't look at me. You're so funny. Don't look at me. See ya.